Google's own smartphone hardware has never really felt like a core part of the Android market. With iOS, everyone's obviously on Apple phones, and with Windows 10 Mobile, Microsoft's your go-to brand. But while Google's been releasing phones year after year, its offerings have never really captured a big chunk of Android sales. Is a bit of a makeover, guess what the doctor ordered? Well, that's exactly what we're getting this year, as Google retires the Nexus brand and introduces its first Pixel phones, the duo of the Pixel and Pixel XL. Designed by Google and featuring some seriously flagship caliber hardware, are these models attractive enough to convince you to put a Google phone in your pocket? I'm Steven Shank with Phone Arena, bringing you a closer look at the larger of the two Pixel phones, the Google Pixel XL. Just like last year with the Nexus 5X and 6P, Google's back with a pair of smartphone sizes, but the Pixel phones finally share one unified look. The phone's body is carved from a solid-feeling piece of aluminum, and the care Google's put into the hardware's design really shows. Just look at the smartly engineered edge profile, with a smooth curve around to the phone's back, a tiny little bevel up front, and a nice flat stripe in between. The end result is a phone that's really comfortable and pleasing to hold, despite the handset size. Around back, Google made the interesting decision to give the Pixel XL a large glass panel surrounding the Pixel Imprint branded fingerprint scanner, as well as the phone's 12.3 megapixel main camera. It's a really odd look, that we can't deny, and while we were all ready to be hating on it, a couple days with the Pixel XL and it's really managed to grow on us. The use of different materials helps your hand instantly know the phone's orientation as you pull it out of your pocket, and guides your finger to that imprint scanner ready to unlock the handset. The phone making industry is waiting to see how many other companies follow Apple's lead in dropping support for analog headphones, but Google's not about to join that crew quite yet, giving the Pixel XL an analog port up top. On the right side, you'll find the power and volume rocker buttons, the former picking up a nice textured surface, and down below we've got a USB 3.0 Type-C port next to the phone's speaker. The Pixel XL's face is dominated by a 5.5-inch Quad HD 1440x2560 resolution AMOLED panel. That's the same resolution as last year's, but a slightly smaller screen this time around. At first glance, everything looks good. It's super sharp and produces bold, eye-popping colors against inky AMOLED blacks, but then you go outside and the screen just can't get quite bright enough to compete with direct, and sometimes not so direct, sunlight. That's a shame, because it looks pretty good indoors. At least, subjectively, it looks pretty good, but our testing found color reproduction to be far from accurate. While white balance isn't bad, colors have a bad habit of being oversaturated, and that's especially true for shades of green. The Pixel XL arrives running Android 7.1 Nougat, and that means plenty of interesting new functionality. When it comes to the display, Google gives users the ability to configure a blue light reducing night light mode, helping to improve eye comfort during after hours phone usage. New system software means getting used to new ways of doing things, and while the interface on the Pixel XL shouldn't look too far into existing Android users, there are a number of adjustments to make. Take the app drawer for instance. On pure Android phones like Nexus and now Pixel models, we've been used to a launcher that store the apps behind an icon, just tap it for access. On the Pixel XL, however, apps now live in a tray that slides up from the bottom of the phone's screen with a swipe. It can take a little getting used to, but it ends up feeling natural pretty fast. Elsewhere on the home screen, we see Google's search widget evolve to take on a new form, as a little icon in the top left that you now need to tap for access. If you prefer the old search bar though, that's still available too. And much like 3D Touch on iOS, you can now long press on app icons to pull up quick access shortcuts, letting you jump right into the middle of them, triggering specific actions in the process. It's taken a long time to get here, but with Nougat on the Pixel XL, Android finally has native split-screen app support. Accessed through the app switcher, you can work with two apps side by side, adjusting who gets the lion's share of screen real estate. It's not a feature you may take advantage of every day, but it's great to have when you need it, and we look forward to seeing how it ends up enhancing our smartphone productivity. Google's long offered a voice assistant for Android phones, but the Pixel XL takes that to the next level with the appropriately titled Google Assistant. After training the software with your voice, you can pull it up at your convenience just by saying OK Google, and yes, even when the phone screen is off. Voice recognition lets you bypass pin or fingerprint authentication altogether. And to manually get at the assistant, instead of swiping up from the on-screen virtual home button, you instead now press and hold the home button. Assistant is very much derivative of services like Google Now, and isn't some game-changing new experience. Sometimes when you ask it to do something, it comes up short or just dumps you into plain old web search results. But when it works, it can be pretty impressive, carrying on a back-and-forth conversation with you as it gathers more data to help better respond to your query. 
And if you're ever not sure just what it's good for, all you have to do is ask the assistant and it will straight up show you all the neat stuff it can do, from booking flights to updating you on the latest sports scores. Google even gives us some cool new gesture controls to play with, including one that takes advantage of the Pixel Imprint fingerprint scanner. Simply swipe down on the scanner and you can check out your notifications and quick settings, just like you were swiping on the screen itself. The whole interface is 19 types of smooth, thanks not just to Google's software foo, but also the beefy as heck silicon powering the Pixel XL. Google arms the phone with the top of the food chain Qualcomm Snapdragon 821 chip. You know the Snapdragon 820 and so many other 2016 flagships? Well, this one is one better. Seriously though, the 821 is basically a slightly faster version of the 820, which our benchmark testing seemed to support. It's not going to blow away existing 820 phones, but it may just eke by them in a side-by-side -side test. That powerful processor is joined by 4GB of RAM, which is just what the doctor ordered if you're going to be doing plenty of two apps at once, split-screen multitasking. For storage options, Google gives us a base 32GB level or 128GB for $100 extra. That's it, no 64GB at all. It would be really cool if this were like the Note 7, not in the catching on fire way, but in the 64 gigabyte minimum way. But 32 gigs will honestly suffice for casual users, especially with all the ways Google tries to integrate cloud storage into the Pixel XL's operation. Speaking of that, the phone's armed with a 12.3 megapixel main camera and 8 megapixel front facer. And for Pixel XL users, Google's letting them store all the pics and video they want on the company's servers, with no downsizing or recompression to speak of. You get to keep all your full res original. That's good, because the photos the Pixel XL takes tend to be damn good looking. The big 1.55 micrometer pixels combined with an f2.0 aperture lens captures plenty of light, and the combo of phase detection and laser assisted autofocus helps you grab pics in a hurry. Most of the time, the results are pretty impressive, especially when shooting in the auto HDR mode the camera software keeps defaulting to. Honestly, it's a bit of a chore to manually keep switching it on or off, but auto HDR works well and doesn't appreciably slow things down. If there are any weak points, focus can be hard to grab in low light conditions, but elsewhere it didn't prove to be problematic. The front facer is fine, but with smaller pixels and a tighter aperture, it struggles across the board in low light environments. Video recording is pretty successful, shooting resolutions up to 4K and supporting some spiffy digital stabilization. The Pixel XL's cameras don't do any optical stabilization, but by taking constant measurements of the phone's position and doing some software magic, Google's able to turn your shaky handheld videos into some impressively stable shots. As far as video playback goes, we've already talked about the display, but what about the speakers? Sadly, stereo front facers don't make a return this year, and instead we get a single mono bottom edge speaker. That doesn't seem especially promising, but it turns out the Pixel XL sounds really nice, delivering both satisfying bass and crisp treble notes. It's not the best we've ever heard, but it's up there. Voice calls also sound decent, and although the phone's size doesn't make it the most comfortable handset to keep held to your ear, we didn't have any problems with call quality. And beyond just good voice performance, the Pixel XL is ready to operate on next-gen data networks, supporting Cat12 LTE for download speeds as high as 600 megabits per second. Well, assuming you have a carrier equipped to provide such a signal. Finally, the phone's powered by a 3450 milliamp hour battery, just like on the Nexus 6P. In our test, we clocked a bit under 7.5 hours of screen on time, which is right in line with our expectations for this kind of hardware package. That's totally solid, though we can understand users wishing phone life might extend a little further. Charging is nice and quick with the included USB Type-C fast charging adapter, able to bring the Pixel XL back to full capacity in under two hours. Only support for wireless charging would really make things any better. With the Pixel XL, Google very much succeeds at giving Android fans an attractive, flagship quality phone. Sure, it misses out on extras like microSD expansion or real heavy-duty waterproofing, but the Pixel XL that we do get is largely well executed. Yeah, its screen could be a little brighter, and the camera falls slightly short of its promise, but these are the exceptions that highlight just how well everything else works. And while some aspects of the phone's software, Google Assistant in particular, could use a little more polish, Nougat's generally a joy to use and adds a lot of useful new functionality to the familiar Android platform. Maybe the biggest problem with the Pixel XL is pricing, and starting at $770, this is not an affordable handset. But if you've got the cash to spare, and you want to make sure you're on the bleeding edge of all the new Android enhancements to come, you should be very satisfied with the Pixel XL. I'm Stephen Shank with Phone Arena. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming reviews.